Welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. I couldn't be more excited about these next two guests. I just watched 12 episodes over the last two weeks of a new show called Found on NBC that you can find on Tuesday nights, next day on Peacock. Let me set this up for you guys. In any given year, more than 600,000 people are reported missing in the U.S. More than half that number are people of color that the country seems to forget about. Now, in Found, public relations specialist Gabby Mosley, who was once herself one of those forgotten ones, and her crisis management team makes sure there is always someone looking out for the forgotten missing people. But unbeknownst to anyone, this everyday hero is hiding a chilling, and I mean chilling secret of her own, because she has captured her childhood kidnapper and has him locked in her basement, and he helps her with her cases. Now, Gabby is portrayed by the insanely talented Shinola Hampton, who you fell in love with on 11 seasons of the Showtime hit show Shameless. And as the mysterious and potentially dangerous sir, you have Mark Paul Gossler, who we grew up watching and loving, of course, on Saved by the Bell. But since then, he has a hell of a resume from NYPD Blue to Franklin and Bash, where you realize he is a hell of an actor. Shinola Hampton and Mark Paul Gossler from Found, welcome to the show. Oh, my gosh. Let's start <laughs> with that. You get an Emmy for the lead in. What you just did? <laughs> I'll see it's you guys so later. No, I'm still going off a hell of an actor. I mean, I'm no, no, no. Insanely talented. No, insanely I mean, talented. We didn't know if you were going to give him any accolades other than his resume, but then you said hell of an actor. I was, well, oh, I was going to rip him a new one for the whole day. I'm going to, whoever does the best, I am cutting the other one out of this interview as we talked about before. Good. So I win. Um, how do you guys go about for a first season of a show creating the dynamic that you have created? Because your scenes, it's a procedural show, you guys listening or watching this, but you guys, the scenes that you have, it's like this Clarice, uh, Hannibal Lecter environment that you've created. How do you do that when, did you guys know each other before this show? God, no, and thank goodness. I don't need any more <laughs> in my life than I have. You know what I mean? That would be a lot. No. Um, we get asked this question a lot, and this is one of those things where it was serendipitous for me. It's God who places people in your life at the right time to go through whatever chapter um, that you're going through at that time. And Mark Paul is a gift to me, truly, on and off the screen. We didn't work on chemistry. We didn't get on the phone and like, oh, my gosh, we got to make this happen. And we have to have this. And it was never any of that. We don't even rehearse our scenes together at any point. We don't even run lines together, to be honest with you. So it's just one of those things that happens when you have a good actor um, and most importantly, a good human being. So and, and I'm hoping, you know, we got picked up for a second season, 22 episodes. So we're going to we're going to bring the show uh, you know, to, to our fans for a whole long year. And I put in my contract that we actually don't film uh, in the same room. So right. next year, Good. Next, yeah, yeah, next year, it'll just Good. be on Zoom, like uh, Sir and, right. and Gabrielle. Will just well, I, I'm just going to be in the car on the telephone <laughs> right. having a conversation <laughs> with him. So what you see is Yeah, fake. put that in your contract, both of you. You guys shouldn't be in the same room together as <laughs> evidence right now. Um, Mark Paul, uh, also, the young Gabrielle, who you do a lot of your scenes with, because they use this device, you guys, where they go, you know, back in time and then present day. Um, who is that actor? Because she is fabulous. And your relationship with her is just as good as your relationship with Shinola. Yeah, she puts Shinola to shame with her abilities. I mean, way better. She's insanely talented. I don't even know what you'd say. Her name is Azaria, Azaria Carter, and she's phenomenal. I mean, we lucked out with her. She is just a, a a gem. She's a local actor from uh, Atlanta. A, a, Atlanta. And uh, I mean, she's just a bright star. And every time I do a scene with her, um, I'm just blown away. I mean, she absorbs. It's much like, I, I, I'm all joking aside, when, when Chanel and I work off of each other, what we're doing is we're, it's 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 not a choreographed dance, but it's it's a dance in a way. But we just absorb what the other one's giving us. And then just, you know, put it out there. And, and the same with Azaria. She comes in and she's war she's willing to just kind of, you know, take what she's given. And, and what you see on the screen is just this, this just listening process and then just, you know, giving what, 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 what uh, she's receiving. She's a force. She's amazing. She's a force. It's really so good. And I love those scenes of the show. Um, Shinola, coming off of 11 seasons of Shameless, you probably had a lot of opportunities. What made Lost something that was an important project for you to do? And also, you're a producer on this show. So what does that mean for you? 
Well, I chose not to do lost and I did found instead, Sorry. which is always Sorry. good. You did it right. That's a good, it that's perfect. a good, oh. It was perfect because that's the good, with, no, but that's what it is. Boy, that was like, really passive aggressive. Uh, wow. I see what you're dealing with, Mark Paul. Well, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a way before you because we did a little short film called We did. Together and we shot in LA and it was one of the first things I ever did. So I can mess with you, right? Am I right? You, um, yes. <laughs> and now we're, but we're both doing great. You have a hit show and I'm talking to you guys. So Look we're good. That, and, you, and you have a hit show. It's so bad. It's good, <laughs> honey. It's so bad. It's good. Um, well, really, it was a long journey to get here. If I'm being honest, I signed an overall deal with NBC and I went through a lot of scripts. That's the blessing of coming off of an 11 uh, season show is you get the opportunity to really look at and take your time to choose what you want that next thing to be. One of the main things that I wanted to do was make sure it was something very different from Veronica because it's so easy to put people in a box, especially in this business and only be seen as one thing. So I wanted to be very intentional about that and also to partner as a producer with people that um, lead from a place of love. And when I say that, the definition of that is NK our showrunner and producer. So on site, when I first met her, it was a love fest and a partnership that I really, really uh, felt passionate about. This was the next move. And then you get a guy like this, who's also loving. The whole set is so full of love. And then you get the script, which the pilot was so impeccably written. And, and the story was told in such a way that made you feel like, yes, you're watching a normal procedural, but wait, no, you're not. And oh, she's a baddie. And oh, she's doing good. But hold on. She's got a little ticky ticky boom boom. There's a man in the basement. And then he goes, I mean, who doesn't say yes to that? I say yes, yes. And yes again. And I would every lifetime. This is just a dream job. And all joking aside, just for the audience, you guys do highlight a lot of cases that are actually out there in the news. And I think that's a really important thing because it's about the relationships between you guys. But it does highlight, uh, you know, kind of an epidemic in America about finding lost children. So I think that's great that every episode there is a different case uh, that you're highlighting. Yeah, and I think that, you know, sometimes it can get overshadowed by having a dynamic um, that Hannibal Lecter, the Mark Paul, the, and, uh, well, Sir and Gabby dynamic. But the main purpose of our show is to bring attention to the discrepancies between some people being highlighted in the media and others in uh, marginalized communities. That's really why we do what we do. That's the purpose of the show is to show cases that have not been shown on television, or maybe they get one episode. No, we're going to take it and take it for eight seasons. So that's really what we want to do. We want to show, show uh, really these, these communities in a big way that are underserved and hopefully start the conversation to how we bring more media attention to those communities in real life. And you're definitely doing that. I, I think one of the really exciting parts of the show, though, is to unravel and uncover your relationship of how it began when you were in school. And I don't want to give anything away for people that are just finding the show, which you can binge right now on Peacock. But when you get this script, Mark Paul, uh, is this something that immediately attracted you? Did, did you have anything in your mind, a trepidation of, I don't know if this is something that I want to go this dark with something? Uh, take us through that uh, thought process. Well, I think when, when we had the conversation, and when I say we, it's NK, the showrunner, and, and I had the conversation, um, I had read my part. I had read, sir, I hadn't read the script for Found. I knew about Found because there's a few scripts during every pilot season that's probably at the top of everyone's, you know, uh, list. And this was one of them. Um, so I was aware of it. And uh, so I read, sir, and I just thought, well, this is a network show. Like, how dark are we going to go? Mm. What are we going <laughs> to show? You know, I, Something that came up to, came up right away was: Is there a sexual component to this abduction? Like, is, is that something we're going to tackle? So a lot of this was um, was explained to me by NK, and, and I just had a just my overall question of like, who? If I research someone, who should I look into? And she said probably the the one that she would um, use as an example was Ted Bundy. You know, he disarmed his victims uh, with his charisma, with his looks, and you wouldn't necessarily think this guy was capable of, of some of the despicable evil things that he did. Um, she says, but if there's anyone that, you know, that you should use as research, it's probably him. And so I started piecing it all together and it, 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 it interests me. And I, th I, I felt it would be a challenge. 
um, read the script, uh, saw the, you know, the, the procedural aspect of our show and, and realized um, that this wasn't your typical procedural that we've seen. And that enticed me. Um, you know, it was such a well-written script and it had a message and that uh, yet it had that component of Sir and Gabrielle which just pushed it to a whole nother level. And that's where I wanted to be a part of it. I mean, from, from a, a viewer's perspective, it is really interesting because you really grow to, and I, I mean, I like, sir, like I start to like, I start to almost root so for sir. Sick. And I, well, no, it's like a dangerous conversation. The no. audience has with themselves of like, wait a sec. Uh, should I want him to be out of the basement? He actually cares for Gabrielle, but there is a dangerous component to that. And that's this weird thing. And you can even say Gabrielle in the amazing performance by Shinola, the things that are going through your mind, the thoughts that we see in your performance yeah. of, you know, coming down. Are you angry with him? Are you going to give him more food? Are you giving him his books back? And I think that's that tension right there. And that's what I, I just watched your most recent episode, episode 12, where we're finding more about the backstory. And I was like, wow, this has been drawn out kind of beautifully. And then I'm like, is he getting out of the basement? What are we, what are, we're, we're about to end the first season. We've got the second, what can you tease coming up? Because the season finale is tonight. Um, by the time you're going to hear this, it will be tonight. And then second season, can you tease anything? Can you give anything away? Um, this is the tease. Everything you just said will be answered in the finale. You won't have to wait, but it also leaves you hungry for more for season two. That's what I can tease. I promise you, you will be satisfied for season one. You'll want some dessert. You might want to go back to the buffet and get a whole other plate because that's what season two is going to do. It, it, it has it all. And I'm so proud of this finale, but I cannot wait for the audience to go on this ride. Uh, no, it really is a really exciting ride. And I was thinking about uh, coming up as an actor myself and the journeys and like a, being a journeyman actor. And Mark Paul, you know, from Saved by the Bell till now, you have this amazing resume of so many parts. And I remember watching you in a TV film called She Cried No. And it was a real switch from what we thought of Zach Morris to what you actually could do. And I remember being young when I watched that and I was like, oh my God, this dude really has it. What was it about Saved by the Bell, like even after that and the popularity of that, that you wanted to continue being an actor, being a journeyman and what you do? Uh, I think survival. That's the word that comes mm -hmm. to mind. I was, I was 19 years old. I had an opportunity to either go to college and, and start a whole nother career or realize at that point, which I did, that this was my career. Um, I was very uh, content and challenged and, you know, you're making great money. And I thought I, I should just continue in this direction, but I had some lean years. I mean, from 94 to 96, mm -hmm. She Cried No came out in uh, 96. Um, I had to audition, that was an NBC movie of the yeah. week when they were doing movie of the weeks back then. You know, I had a, my, my career had started on NBC, but there were no givens. I, I wasn't guaranteed an, a, another job with them. I was sort of uh, put in a box, you know, that I was playing this, this character that I played as Zach Morris. I, I didn't look or act like Zach Morris, but I had to prove myself. And, and She Cried No was really the, the, I was with Candace Cameron Burr. I, I played another despicable character. I played <laughs> yeah. a, a rapist. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. but you I actually did a, I was not a straight. I think, <laughs> I think, no, I just think, I just remember that performance and going, oh, wow, this guy is a real actor. Like this guy can do kind of everything. And I thought that was really interesting. And then you had this kind of amazing career of all of these different roles. And that's why it's so great to see you in this role for people to see what you can do. Just the little specificities of when you got a, a little a, you know piece of the dinner on your sleeve and seeing that kind of tension in your face and what unravels you in those small moments. And you don't see a lot of that kind of, um, uh, specificity on network television or not nearly as much as you'd like. And I, I think that's what this show is kind of special. Your performances really are a cut above what I'm used to seeing. Yeah. And, and I, I don't take it for granted to be on a show like this and to be given those opportunities to show that on network television. You're exactly right, Ryan. Um, so I, I, I am so grateful that, that we have NK, our showrunner and all of our writers writing these things and that we actually get to do this on network because it is, it is not, um, it's, it's 
you know, it's not. No, NBC program. is smart. NBC really took a risk, not only to be able to tell these stories, but to let NK, let creatives be creatives and just do the material without all of that extra notesy stuff for people who are not artists. NBC trusts the process. They trust NK. They trust Greg Berlanti to put on a great show and for us to do our thing. Mark Paul and I trust the scripts that we're given. We are not those actors that go on and complain about this line and that line. We trust <laughs> the process. And so when you have that amount of trust along with really smart people, that's what you get. And so we can do more of that. If we can open the door to get back to that, then I think we also have done a service for the world, honey. But also, well, just thinking, you know, you were, you were talking about, we have a we have a large cast and we have a yeah. diverse cast, very talented cast. And I think one thing that we can tease for next season and we is, is that we start learning about them as well. And we start going into their backstories, much like you did with uh, Sir and Gabrielle, which I, I mean, I'm a fan of the show, so I'm excited to see see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Mark, Paul, are you are you potentially wanting to actually have her rehearse with you next season? Because uh, now she will not rehearse with you from what you've told me. Would, would you like to run? No, <laughs> listen, the less, the less contact, the less, the less everything. Right, you have uh, to too have. much. Rehearse. Talk to me. Go to the trailer. Don't talk to me in between takes. <laughs> um, Shanola, what's it like for you to actually, you know, I was looking at the promotional materials and it's like you, you know, found your figure like you are leading this show this ensemble show but you are the face of this show in a lot of like what does that mean to you um being an actor that comes from south carolina you know mm -hmm. i mean i think you i, I read that you you st started acting you were doing like diana ross and like a yeah, pageant or something like that little, when yeah, you were little carolina. my mom was not one of these people that was like let's move to la and uproot the family who does that <laughs> a lot of people but not my parents so it had to be when i was really grown but um you know the, the the truthful answer to that question ryan is it was a lot of pressure because there are not many people who look like me that get the opportunity to be on a network television show and to be the lead and so not pressure because you want something vain for yourself. Of course, we all want successes, but pressure because if this show doesn't work, then the next person doesn't get the opportunity. And that didn't weigh on me as heavily until we were in the middle of a strike. I could not promote it. And there were all these posters with my face on it. So no one would understand that, oh, these are crazy times or whatever the, if it didn't work, right? So it would just be literally my face falling flat on the ground if it didn't work. And I felt that, and I felt that in a very real way um, as a female, as a female of color, and for all of the other personal things for my family. This is not a position that I never saw myself in. I obviously visualize and and knew where my place in this world is right what i was meant to do so to do it and for it to be a success is um is wonderful yeah it really is um uh the other thing you mentioned about your cast you you know you have this kind of agency of people that go out and find lost uh lost children lost people um and it's kind of like the avengers in a sense each one brings something unique to the process who is the is it is it kelly williams the actor oh, who yes, she kelly, is the legend i mean she's a powerhouse like i mean what a that's another there's there's all of these people that you kind of fall in love with or kind of like wow they're really giving something uh a little bit more than what's on the page even though that's amazing they just they bring that to life um is that were you part of the casting process? Was this built around you initially? Um, built around me would be a stretch, but was I a part of the casting process? Absolutely. That's one of the advantages of being a producer on the show. And I got to read with several people. What I want to point out also is that people do this thing where they say diversity casting for the sake of being diverse. These are just the right actors for the right job that are also diverse. They're very, very good. They're very good actors. And I think we have to really make sure that we identify that the diversity on our show is to really highlight that trauma has no age. It has no gender. It has no sexuality. It, it comes in all forms. That's number one. Number two is these baddies. Kelly Williams, this is how I introduce her to every director that comes to guest. Say hello to Kelly Williams, the legend, okay? Before <laughs> you begin the process, say, 
pay, pay her her respect. Kelly K has been a director for a very, very long time. And so she stepped away from being in front of the camera. But this show and what she knew she could bring to Margaret was so important to her that she got back in front of the camera. And aren't we happy that she did? And then you have Karin, who is Don. And if you saw his performance in the last couple of episodes, throughout he's been fantastic. But you saw what he did just bringing it he is the real deal and nothing like Don at all. He's a big old goofball, but he is so, so powerful. And then you have Zeke played by Arlen, who's inside of his own little world. And he has the hardest job on our set because he doesn't really get the face-to-face -face interaction. And you see all of the ways that he is able to show the emotion and how hard it is. I mean, you have the Gabrielle Walsh's who has the eyes like a deer. Come on, <laughs> this cat came ready to serve the people. So yes, we're diverse, but diverse with these fierce talents that were meant to play these roles. And that is something to be really proud of. Well, here's my hope that Mark Paul can actually meet half of these characters in the second season, no. because at this it's point, he can only meet a handful of he, you just wheel him into the uh, your your big like bat cave place where you find the people. I mean, I, that's what I'm so curious about how you handle this and the relationship, because it does come back to you guys. It, it's like it falls on you guys. And that really is this exciting part that you pepper throughout every episode. Um, Just since this is a pop culture show, what inspires you right now in terms of like music movies tv what do you guys like to watch and listen Are you to you're swifty you're swifty of course you're <laughs> got a bracelet i mean that worked yeah. out really well for what taylor you know, swift era are you mark paul yeah <laughs> He doesn't know any. He's just shaking his head. He's shaking his head. I asked. I asked. I asked his my buddy Andrew about him. And he's like, "Listen, dude. He's a great guy. He likes his cold plunge. He he loves his dog. Like you know, you're there. He was like he." He was just saying, he was like, listen, this is, he's a great guy. He got me coffee for Christmas. I love him, you know? And I was like, all right. So you're not a Swifty though, potentially. I'm, I'm a simple man, Ryan. I really am. <laughs> I mean, I consider myself, I, when I was on social, my, my, um, what would it be? Your tech, like, what, what, how do you? Your hashtag? No, would you talk about yourself? Like your, your bio or oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was a husband first, then a father, then an actor. I mean, I, I consider like, I'm. I'm happiest when I'm at home and I'm with my family. Um, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I, 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 I know it's sorry. So it really is. It's so wow. Okay. okay, this is the headline. Mark Paul Gosseler hates Taylor Swift. It's kind of the old man who's been in the business for 40 minutes. No, 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 no. He's locked in a basement, Shinola. He's locked in a basement. He does yeah. not hear music. No. I, I love I love to travel. I love, like, like our friend. That right? is you know, not pop culture. I, I love, what music uh, inspires you? What do you like? Music. We I mean, love music. Howard Stern. We're huge Howard oh, Stern fans. Huge Baba Howard Stern. Bowie. I'm a huge Howard Stern fan. Too. Andrew is too, actually. Yes. Yes. Listen, oh my God. On, Did you hear he got COVID for the first time last yes. week? I'm, and here's me. This is how much of a fan I am. I'm in the car trying to figure out where in the heck did he get COVID? Because oh, Beth, really, Beth, Beth is like, where. yeah. Beth, the Beth and Howard fight was probably some of the funniest <laughs> yes. 45 minutes on radio. And Beth is all like a horse and she can't even say, I was, this was not, a, I wasn't <laughs> there. No, it was, it was, it was too good for words. So we love Howard Stern. Listen, I, I'm, I'm going to drop a name Oop. here, but you Gary Delabate and I are on a texting Oop. basis. Wait, you cut out we for text. a sec. Can okay, you... Michael Rappaport. I, yes, I'm just oh, saying, I'm just saying, but I watch the show when it airs. Yeah. Like, I, I listen to the show when it's airing. And then you text Gary. And then I text Gary, I'm like, is <laughs> And he's like, oh, my God. Bob I'll show you text between us. I don't want to see we're, you and Baba like Booey house. texting. It's we're fine. House. Okay. That's how um, it comes. <laughs> I love Fred. I'm a big fan of Fred. Oh, huge. I, I wish fun. Howard was nicer to Fred. I do wish I know, Howard was I, nicer to Fred. I do you know that Fred I was one so of the talented. first ones to say F Bobo. I was on the Howard. Really? I was on the wrap up show. I was one of the first ones. If you go back to like 2014, 15, I was on the wrap up show and I said F Bobo. And then Bobo was like, you know how many awards I have? You know how many driving <laughs> awards? <laughs> has no awards. And you know what? Bobo's right. I actually don't have any no, awards. I've JD. never been nominated for JD's anything. My JD's my oh, JD with JD's his spoon with favorite. his spoon collection. He just Listen. I mean, like, come on. This wrap up show of the Golden Gloves. And then I love Richard and it's Richard's dad. Richard's dad. Hey, hey Bob, this is your dad. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm from the South. So every time he says, you know, we just got a coon and oh my, I mean hey, I could talk you're about into all this. this. You're into this, but would you ever have Sal uh read your cards? Yes. 
There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. I think they give Sal a hard time. I think Sal's... No, a, Sal's an idiot. No, he has he, great intentions. Idiot. And I mean, sure, maybe the dimes it. on the street doesn't mean anything. Oh, the but, birds, the cardinals, the squirrels. Sal gets discredit when he starts like smoking and all that. Like you can't be like energetically and talk about purified energy and then poison your body. That's where I <laughs> have a little bit of Sal. Okay, so we all love Howard Stern. Shanola, yeah. for you though, what do you watch that inspires you that you're like, ooh, I wanna I wanna make something like this. This really inspires me, or hearing this uh, artist or anything like that. So much TV. I'm a TV fanatic. There's so much good TV out right now. There was a show called The Other Black Girl that I really was into because it was so different. And um it was um unfound talent which I really am a uh, big on the, you, you get recycled. Listen, I want to work forever, but I love to see new emerging talent doing really good work. So that was one of the ones that I saw. There was um, the diplomat. Did you watch the diplomat? Oh, the diplomats, uh, Carrie Russell, right? On, on Listen Netflix. To me about this show. Okay. <laughs> Play with it. If you want to talk about, <laughs> we're talking about our finale that leaves you wanting more. If the diplomat doesn't get back on my screen in two weeks, I think I'll die. <laughs> Okay. I'm so ready. Okay, that's good. And I do want to remind people as we start winding down here, you can get all 12 episodes before the 13th episode. You're going to have to listen to this and then watch all day before tonight. Um, you know, you can get all of that on Peacock. That's where I watched over the last two weeks these episodes. And then how long do you think we're going to have to wait until season two premieres? Because we had the strike. I think I can answer out of that. that pretty safely. You'll have to wait until the fall. We're a fall show. NBC will be back. Maybe, maybe since, you know, we had to wait so long with the strike and stuff, maybe the fall <laughs> will come a little bit earlier. You know, we'll be after Labor Day or October. Maybe we can <laughs> jump in there in August, get the kids back at school, turn on the TV, and there's found. I, honestly, I know we'll be fall. I don't know what month. So just make it through right now. We're going to go back and shoot in a few weeks. Follow like our social medias. He doesn't have one because he's an old man, but it's yeah, fine. Old, simple man. He's <laughs> a simple man. Show. Yes. Don't call him on so bad is good and you don't even have an Instagram, sir. <laughs> I'm so sorry for her, Mark Paul. Um uh also you both are our parents. Uh do your kids watch any of the things that you've done? My kids watch Found. They love it. They Wait, my real? daughter thinks I'm so mean to him. So you kind of are at times, Paul. yeah. And she says, Mom, why are you so mean to Mr. Mark Paul? You're like, his name's I Sir. He kidnapped your mother. She doesn't care. <laughs> She's just trying to figure out why the toast is burnt. <laughs> and, do, wait, and do your kids watch uh, Found? No. No. Not even. <laughs> you don't a, have a TV. I'm, I'm, a good, I'm a good parent, Ryan. <laughs> I don't watch a show like I Found is watch disturbing. Shameless. Well, that's disturbing too. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so in, in this off season, how do you guys keep, uh, I mean, as actors, uh, you know, I mean, besides promoting, you're not going to see each other until you start filming again. Is there something as actors, do you guys stay in touch in the off season? Is it like football? Oh, teams? No, 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 no. That's in my contract. I don't let him have my personal phone number. Um, I don't want to know anything Smart. about, no, I'm kidding. We're actual friends. So <laughs> I'm going to go up to see him and his family where they live. It's that we will stay. We communicate multiple times a week, sometimes in the day. It, we actually are madly in love in the complete, you gross me out kind of way. Mark Paul is not saying anything, so I think he completely disagrees with everything you just said. Did Andrew tell you about him, how quiet he is? This is him brooding, and this no, is No, he him. just said he's... No, he really said he's... No, Andrew goes, he's a really good guy. He's a really... Andrew goes, he's a really good guy. And I was like, oh, I'm not a good guy? And I was like, is he better than I am? And he was like, kind of, yeah. So... uh Guys, this has been a little silly, but I do want to say this is a really great show that you should actually check out. And since we're not getting it second season until the fall, you have plenty of time, even though I think you need to watch it as soon as you can. Uh, I really got swept up in this. I think both of your performances are amazing. And I've been fans of you both for a very long time. So thank you for taking the time with us today. And I hope to uh, talk to you guys down the line sometime again. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan You're amazing. You so when you say both of us, like fans, of, right? Let me just clarify for a long time. I know 40, 50, 60 years or whatever with him. Yeah. But who would you have like a big poster of in your room? Yeah. <laughs> well, Chinola, do you have a poster? Do you have, are you, oh, wait, is there, that's are, a dick. I love that. 
High five, Ryan. High five. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, 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 hey. Wait. Hey. <laughs> guys, you're hearing this interview, and it's I swear to God, it's not this silly on the show. This is a very serious, intense show. So I just want you to know it's not the goofy, ha-ha, Howard Stern yeah. stuff that we're yeah, doing. Yeah, did you yeah. have a poster? No. Oh, oh that's, that's my new go-to. No, it's so Anytime bad. Hit, it's good. Oh, it's so it's good. so bad. It's, it's good. so good. Oh, thank it's you for fun. making this easy, you guys.